Dr. Stoop here to teach you how to insert a nasogastric tube. Items you'll need. Nasogastric tube. A 60 milliliter syringe with a bottle nose tip. Lubricating jelly. Alcohol wipes. A blue pad. Tape of your preference. A glass of water with a flexible straw. And if you are concerned the patient may vomit on you, wear protective eyewear and a gown. It is not required, but for style, the provider may wish to wear a bouffant. Now first, prep the patient with a blue pad so that secretions or other fluids will not get on their gown. Next, open the nasal gastric tube and measure the length required to reach this stomach. And this tube, it appears to be about 65 centimeters for this patient. Next, prepare your bottle-nosed 60 cc syringe because you will not have time to open it once the tube's already in. I like to prime it once and then fill it with air and set it nearby. Also prepare the tape of your preference. Tear it vertically and we'll see how to fasten this on the patient later. Put this on the bedside and a second piece of tape will be required to go horizontally across the bridge of the nose. Now if the patient's nose is especially oily for the tape to have better adhesive properties, you may use an alcohol swab to wipe the oil residue from their nose prior to the procedure. I recommend removing the patient's glasses. Sanitize your hands and put on gloves. This is not a sterile procedure as the GI tract is not sterile. Have a cup of water with a flexible straw readily available at the bedside. Now open the lubricating jelly and lubricate the distal tip of the nasogastric tube. Now to walk you through this before we go ahead, you do not want to insert it vertically or you could penetrate the sphenoid sinus and puncture the patient's brain. 
You want to enter at a 90 degree angle and go along the base of the nasal bridge. You may hit the oropharynx or nasopharynx and at that point the tube will have to turn downwards. Do this gently as it may irritate the patient and cause them to gag. Once you make the turn downwards Next, you will approach the larynx. When you approach the larynx, halt. And that is when you should tell the patient to drink water. Swallowing will cause the epiglottis to cover the trachea and help the nasogastric tube pass into the esophagus. And if the patient continues to drink, it will help lubricate the tube as it moves forward down the esophagus into the stomach. Advance the tube until you reach 65 centimeters. Now remember, there are human instincts that will kick in when a foreign object is being penetrated into someone's nasal cavity. One human instinct will be for the patient to grab the tube and rip it out. That is why I advise that you have an assistant there to hold the patient's hand to remind them not to rip the tube out. Another human instinct is to punch the person who is placing the foreign object in their nose in the face. I recommend all providers placing nasogastric tubes to be aware of a patient trying to punch you in the face. If you do see a patient start to punch you, I recommend dodging to the side. Dodge to the side. Dodge to the side. Dodge to the side. Now, you may examine the patient's nostrils with a pen light to see which side is larger. You may also ask them to breathe out of each nostril to see which side is larger. This particular patient has equally sized nostrils. We will enter the right nostril. Now, remember, 90 degrees Go along the base of the nose, advancing very gently and slowly. Turn the corner. You will feel some resistance as it hits the back of the nasal pharynx, but if you proceed gently, it will go downwards. Now I am meeting resistance and it will coil in the mouth unless the patient drinks. Now is when I will tell the patient to drink. As the patient swallows, advance the tube. If you are initially unsuccessful, you may re-lubricate the tube and re-attempt in the contralateral nostril. 
We will now reattempt placing the nasogastric tube in the contralateral nostril. Okay, how many centimeters are we at? <coughs> We're about at 65. Triggered my gag reflex. Now you'll notice I can talk, which means the tube is not between my vocal cords, which me means it's not in my trachea. It is causing the back of my throat to be sore. Now, Tape the tube in place. Uh, like so. Get your stethoscope. And Auscultate over the stomach, over the epigastric region, while at the same time insufflating air into the tube. If you hear an air bubble, the tube is most likely in place. in place <laughs> now if the patient could not talk or you could hear their respirations through the tube or they were in respiratory distress it was probably be in the lungs and you should remove it. Now, in the olden days, you know, once we heard, confirmed by hearing the gastric bubble, we would just use the tube, but nowadays, you have to confirm it with an x-ray. So, order an abdominal x-ray to confirm that the uh, nasal gastric tube is in the stomach. This ends the demonstration.